So lesson 1.4 is arithmetic sequences and series. Our essential question is what is an arithmetic sequence and how do you represent and find its terms and their sums? So the first example we have, it asks, is the sequence arithmetic? If so, what's the common difference and what's the next term in the sequence? So for something to be arithmetic, it means we're either adding or subtracting by a common term each time. So you can see to get from 3 to 8, we're adding 5. From 8 to 13, we're adding 5. 13 to 18 and 18 to 23, we're adding 5. So we would say, yes, this is arithmetic. And the common difference... common difference would be 5. If you were subtracting, you would say the common difference would be a negative number, okay? So the common difference, because we're adding 5 each time, that's where positive 5 comes in. So the next term in our sequence would be 28. Okay, so the other thing we want to talk about with this example is what is the recursive and the explicit definition or formula for this sequence? So we're going to start with recursive. So recursive relies on the term before it. And so it's not a super helpful formula if you're trying to find like the 99th term, because in order to find the 99th term, you need to know the 98th term and so on. So, but it is one of the two types of formulas that we're going to be talking about. So the recursive definition is to say a n, and that n is a subscript. It just means to find whatever term we're looking for. And then we're going to write this as a piecewise function, okay? Kind of like in our last section. So the first line is a1, which stands for the first term, when n equals 1. Oops looks like a not equal to. So let's try that again. There we go. Okay. And then our second line, we're going to say n a with a subscript of n minus one. So this term right here refers to the term before. So whatever the term before is, and then you're going to add D. So D I'll label this up here is your common difference. And that is true when n is greater than 1. So if I was writing a recursive formula for this example that we're looking at right here, I would say a n equals, and then the first term is 3, when n equals 1. So that's just our notation for saying the first number in our sequence is 3. And then I would say a n minus 1 plus 5 when n is greater than 1. So if you see that recursive formula written, you could then write out what the sequence is. So you could say, okay, my first number is 3, and I'm adding 5 each time. So that would mean it's 3, 8, 13, 18, and so on. Okay, so that's recursive. The other type is explicit. Okay, explicit is only going to have one line, so it's not a piecewise. So it's going to say a n equals, and then it's going to be a 1 plus d times n minus 1. And notice this n right here is a subscript, but this n right here is just a variable. Okay? So d, again, is our common difference. n is the term number that we're trying to find. Okay? So for this example, we could say that a n equals 3 plus 5 times n minus 1. Now, if you're asked to simplify it, then we can, we can distribute out the 5 and add the 3. So this would be 3 plus 5n minus 5, which would turn into, oops, not 3, this would turn into 5n, and then we combine the 3 and the negative 5, and we get minus 2. 
So 5n minus 2. Explicit formulas are super helpful for finding any, any term we're looking for. So we would use 5n minus 2. If we want to know the 99th term in this sequence, we would plug in 99 for n. So it'd be 5 times 99 minus 2. That'll tell you what the 99th term is. So explicit is more useful when you're trying to find any random term in a sequence. Recursive is helpful if it's a little bit easier to write the sequence from the recursive formula. Okay, so that is how we write the two formulas. And now we're going to get into finding the sum of a series. So it says, what is the sum of the terms of the arithmetic sequence 1, 4, 7, 10, 13? So this is a finite sequence, which means that it has an ending point. We're not going on forever. It ends at 13. So it's not like the last example that we did. So there is a formula that allows us to find the sum of a series. And it is S equals N times A1 plus AN oops, divided by 2. So N stands for the number of terms you have. A1 is your first term. AN is your last term. Okay, and that's going to help us find the sum. So we need to find all these things. So N, in this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five terms in our sequence. So that means that N is 5. A1 is our first term, which is 1. And AN is our last term, or the fifth term in our sequence, which is 13. So then we just plug that into the formula. And so we say 5 times 1 plus 13 over 2. Make sure you type this into the calculator correctly or you reduce each step at a time. So this is 5 times 14 divided by 2. And you should get 35 as the sum. Now this one only has 5 terms to it, so you could check it. You could do 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus 10 plus 13. It's going to save you time if you have like 75 terms in a sequence where you don't want to plug all of those single numbers into the calculator. But for this case, it saves, it saves us time from having to... Um, we could add those 5 together though to tell what it is. Okay, so that is the sum formula. Okay, and then there's this other thing that goes with the sum formula, which is sigma notation. So you might see things written using the sigma symbol. And what this is, is this is very similar to what we just did, and we're going to end up using that sum formula, but it's just a different notation. So this, how we read this, so we need to again find our n, our a1, and our an, okay? So the first thing is that top number right there tells us how many numbers we have in our sequence. So this means that n is 9, okay? And then our first term, we're going to find that out by plugging in um, 1 into that. This, is, this right here is an explicit formula. So if we want to know our first term, we're going to take 2 times 1 minus 6. So 2 times 1 minus 6 gives us our first term, which is negative 4. Okay, then to find our last term, we need to plug in the last n value, or in this case it's an i value, so we're going to plug in 9. So 2 times 9 minus 6 would be 12. So that means our last, oops, I don't know why I wrote 13. Our last term is 12. Okay, now we have the things we need in order to plug it into the sum formula. So we're going to do that. So this would be 9 times negative 4 plus 12 divided by 2. And if we reduce that, so this would be 8 times 9 on the top divided by 2, and you should get a sum of 36. So that's how you use sigma notation. So again, this part right here is just the explicit formula. 
and you can plug in the n values to find the first term and the last term, and that 9 on the top is going to tell you how many terms you have in a sequence. Okay, so now the next thing is how can you write the series 2 plus 9 plus 16 all the way to 79 using sigma notation? What is the sum? Okay, so we want to use that sigma notation, so we're always going to put i equals 1 on the bottom. Now we need an explicit formula and we need to know how many terms there are. So right now we don't know that, okay? So we know that a1 is 2, that's all we know, okay? We don't know a n, or we do know a n, we know a n is 79, but we don't know n. But I'm also going to add in here, we know what D is. We know the common difference. So we can see right here, we're going up by 7 each time. So we know that D is 7. So we're going to use that to write our explicit formula. So our explicit formula, remember, is our first term, which is 2, plus D, which is 7, times N minus 1. So if we reduce that, or we simplify that, we get 2 plus 7n minus 7. Then we're going to combine the 2 and the negative 7. So we get 7n minus 5. So that right there is my explicit formula I'm going to write over here, but I'm going to use an i with it instead of the n. So we're going to say, because that's the letter we use here. So this is going to be 7i minus 5. Okay. Now I need to figure out what n is. So we can figure out n by actually solving this here. So I'm going to, let's move, I'm going to write it up here. So we know that the last term is 79. So I'm going to say that 79 equals 7n minus 5. So what I'm doing is I'm solving to figure out what term is equal to 79. So we're going to add 5 to both sides and we get 84 equals 7n. Then we're going to divide by 7 and we get 12. So that means that 79 is the 12th term, which means on the top of our sigma notation we put a 12 and that right there is how we'd write sigma notation for that series. Okay. So if there are any questions while you're going through the homework problems, let me know and I can help.